Hello, my name is Josh Atkinson, and you have once again stumbled upon my portrait painting YouTube channel. Uh, this week I'm going to continue uh, the conversation that was about this painting last week, kind of about color, that was more about color and form. This week we're going to be looking at this portrait, uh, Victorian looking lady, where I'm going to talk about, I guess, the appropriateness of color placement, where when, why it can and cannot make sense. Um, I'm speculating, just to make that clear. I am not an authority, but I did paint this, and now uh, we're going to watch the time lapse. So here is our source image, and now the time lapse, and as you can see, I am painting over a portrait of Audrey Hepburn that I... I guess it turned out good. It's more my older style of just conventional, traditional realism. Um, but I still wasn't exactly thrilled with it, and at this point I'm, I'm just not really interested in that style, so I am painting over it. Though I will admit I felt like like I was taking a bit of a risk of uh, painting over an essentially successful painting to do something more creative. But, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, so I start with the Andrew Loomis circle. You can see that the subject is looking kind of diagonal, um, so I place her feature, her eyes at that angle, and that becomes the roadmap for the rest of her features. Um, I don't know how much you can tell watching these time lapses, but I'm constantly uh, like holding the brush vertically and aligning like a nostril with a pupil or the corner of a lip with. Um, with whatever happens to be uh, lining up with it, that's how I, that's how I place everything. Um, yeah. So, so with this painting, I got like last week I got kind of crazy in a good way with color, and then this week, like I learned, well, I don't know. I'm guessing that this became such a green dominant portrait because she's wearing green clothing um i don't i don't know i'm 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 curious about this process that's emerging in my work of like when do i choose violet when do i choose cool tone violet when do i choose red tone violet when do i choose warm green cool green like cuz i'm i'm sort of exaggerating colors in human skin in areas where they don't naturally occur. So, I don't know, I, I can't really explain why I went so heavy into the green, except that maybe the clothes were reflecting it into her skin, or maybe it was just the power of suggestion. I saw a green collar and I said, well, maybe these shadows are, are green too. Um, one thing to point out, uh, I noticed just when I was putting in this first stage of her iris, I'm using pretty large brushes. Um, the woman that I learned painting from was a, I never met her, um, she was dead by the time I discovered her PBS show, but it was called Welcome to My Studio with Helen Van Wyck, and she would always say that you, you start with a, a brush and you end with a toothpick. So when I'm laying in these features, I'm, I'm using, like, brushes that are like, the, the, the width of the brush basically is the width of her uh, eyeball, well not eyeball, what do you call it, like, you know, the iris. Um, I'm using filbert brushes, by the way. This is a recent development. I always used angle brushes or like square rectangular brushes, and uh, lately I've been into filberts because Chelsea Lang was describing using them on her channel. She's probably my favorite uh, painting, uh, oil painting YouTube person, um, even though we work in pretty different styles. But anyway, you can see like the red and the green are there. I probably had some anxieties about uh, this turning into a Christmas portrait by putting those two colors uh, so notably next to each other. But you can see the red is not a primary red. It's definitely moving into a sort of peach terracotta kind of color and the green, which is uh, a viridian, the only greens I use are Viridian and Sap, um, cool and warm. Um, well, there's some Sap, I guess. But uh, but it seemed blue-toned enough that it didn't read like Christmas green. 
whatever. Now you can see I'm throwing some blues around her eyes and the, I guess, the lower uh, right jawline area. Um, and pretty soon I'm going to have to confront <laughs> this big anxiety I had with this painting of, like, do I have to put the veil on? You can see, I just wanted to point out, I, I just, her, the nasolabial fold next to her nose and mouth on the right, like, I just laid down a value that was too dark. A lot of painting tutorials say you don't mix tones in the canvas, but I sort of, like, that you do it on the palette and then you put it on the canvas already knowing where it's going to go. I, I, I love when people do that. I, I think it's so smart and academic and, like, impressive but I'm not trained, and so I do it. I'll throw down something dark, and I'll blend it out, because, I don't know, like, it just, it works out fine. So anyway, I just wanted to point out that I, I do that, and according to most YouTube channels, that's wrong, but it's working for me, so I guess I'm going to keep doing it. I love this great big thick passage of impasto under her right eye of just the lightest flesh tone. Like, I just, I'm just plopping it there, and... Up close, I guess you could say it compromises the resemblance, the likeness, a touch, but not from seven feet away, like not the way that it would look on a gallery wall, which hopefully it will be on at some point. Um, but, uh, oh, now I'm doing the scary stuff. Now I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I was just so anxious about this veil. I was like, maybe I could just not do it and no one will say anything on YouTube, but we all know that is not how social media works, and someone would be reading me for not doing the veil. Um, I, I, let's, how do I explain this? I, basically, I just kind of thought about it, and I was like, is the veil informing the tone values or the colors? And the answer was, like, yes, but it was already what I had painted, because I'm looking at her with the veil on. Um, at this point, I decided to crosshatch it, even though it was barely visible as crosshatch, and it it kind of makes it all work. Um, so anyway, we're about to be finished. I don't know if I've said anything useful, but uh, but yeah, this is this is how I do it. You there's uh, I add one more of the the four dot kind of thing at her chin, or maybe two more, even though they weren't there. They just kind of made it look more unified. Uh, as you can see, there's the finished image. Uh, it is an oil painting on a 5x7 canvas panel. So then, that is how we arrived at this portrait of this uh, veiled actress, whose name I, I did not bother to learn. Just grabbed, grabbed a photo off the internet. Um, hopefully you're learning something about, about style. Um, this is the, the progression that I'm moving in, and uh, I'd love to hear more about your adventures in style or uh, maybe what holds you back i'd be especially curious about that maybe make a video that tackles the things that um get in the way of pushing toward these more whatever our like specific stylistic style should be <laughs> um anyway thank you for the comments and the subscribers that have been manifesting of late i really appreciate the feedback i really appreciate the interaction and um yeah so hopefully you're enjoying this please do like and subscribe share if you want comment if you want that'd be great and i will be seeing you next week i hope you have a creative seven days till then okay bye bye